Armed youths in Lagos State have had enough of hoodlums and their attacks and are now protesting against them. And once again, the secretary to the government of the Federation, the SGF, Boss Mustafa, speaks again, and this time he admits the truth as regards Abakiari's burial and basic infrastructures in Nigeria. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Armed youths who protested against alleged attacks by hoodlums known as the One Million Boys threw residents of Mushin, Owaroshoki, Shomolu, Bariga, and the solar areas of Lagos State into a state of panic. It was reported that the demonstrations in these areas were as a result of the continuous attacks launched by the hoodlums on residents during the lockdown caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. It was gathered that the suspected hoodlums had planned to strike on Monday, but youths in the affected areas armed themselves to repel the impending attacks. And joining us to have a conversation on this is a security expert, Dixon Osage, live in the studio. And also via Skype is Onyekachi Adekoya, also a security expert. Thank you, Onyekachi, for joining us via Skype. Thank you for having me. And Dixon and in the live the studio. Videos. Thank you for joining us, Dixon. Nice to be here, Benny. Now, let, let's start off this way. I mean, um, there, there, there were definitely meant to be security implications of, of the lockdown, and we did bother about this the last time we were on the show together. Um, what, what do you think is playing out here? I'll, I'll go with you first, Onyekachi. Uh, so, I, if you ask me, my, my sincere opinion is that um, people are becoming a bit hysterical, and um, in, a, in a situation of crisis like this, um, people tend towards um, all sorts of things just to get information. So the incidents in Mushi and um, Bagada, Shomolu Axis, were pretty much just fake news. Um, some people had insinuated that there was impending attack from the one million boys and people came out in their numbers, uh, which is why we always advise that in a crisis situation, always vet and verify your source of information before you go out to act. So I think we are almost near a state of um, hysteria in amongst the members of public. And we just advise them to take uh, these information a bit more with a pinch of salt. All right, earlier on in our news, we have the PPRO police of Lagos State, and he had this to say. Take a look. Now, on the update of security in Lagos, what is exactly the police doing toward, um, to ward off the growing attacks against citizens during this lockdown? Well, uh, we have our patrols ongoing. We have also our surveillance teams out there. The commissioner of police is also personally leading his own patrol team. We are right on the road now. That is why you can hear the noise. Uh, nobody is in the office uh, anymore. Right from the inception of the lockdown. I can't even remember sleeping for more than two hours uh, in a day from the commencement of this uh, lockdown in Lagos. So we are all out to be sure that uh, Lagosians are safe, to be sure that uh, the lives and properties of the citizens are fully protected. That we have done even um, in the first two weeks, and we will, st we will still do it till the end of this challenge to overcome it together and even beyond. All right. Now, there have been instances where some citizens had got hold of some of these hoodlums, but complained that the police refused to come and take them away. Are you, of this, are you very much aware of this development? You see, the big challenge we have, about a few days to the end of the first two weeks, that is when we have issues, um, a lot of messages sent online on social media, creating panic that some set of criminals uh, that uh, attacked one million boys are uh, coming to invade some communities, to attack communities, to, to rob some communities. That rumor became so thick, and the calls we, you know, we are coming seconds by seconds. Then spontaneously, also, you have some young people coming out with all manner of weapons, you know, 
under the name of also protecting their neighborhoods. Now, from the first few days, you see them burning tires, creating more panics and more fears. The message is the same everywhere, that they are out to protect their communities because they heard that some uh, criminal elements are coming. And I'm not sure up to now, those criminal elements have invaded any community because uh, as far as we are concerned, they don't exist. And there is no criminal gang in Lagos that has the capacity to override the state. There is no, there is no single one. Because uh, Lagos has one of the best security architecture in Nigeria. We have uh, the best personnel, the resources. We, are, we have been doing it over the years. We have been dealing a big blow on criminal gangs, all those gangs and cultists. We have been dealing with them, and uh, there is no gang, no group or so. If I repeat, I, I, I'll say this with all level of boldness, that there is no one that has the capacity to face us or has the capacity to override the state. And, and Tristan, you, you're trying to impose confidence in the, in the residents of Lagos State about you people being on top of the matter. But I want to ask you this. Has there been any, any arrest since this court violence in parts of Lagos? If yes, have they been prosecuted? We have over 200 suspects arrested, hoodlums in specific terms. Okay. We have also violators also arrested in large number. In, in one of the operations, we have about uh, 202 arrested violators, hoodlums over 200 arrested. Before the lockdown, we have over 800 of the hoodlums arrested. The 800 are in prison already. The 200 also we got within this period also, we have charged to court also, because we have court sitting for, for this purpose. Courts were also in, uh, on holidays because of the lockdown. But the Belay al Khan, the PPRO of Lagos State. Now, you heard what he rightly said. Now, reports of robberies and likes have been reported around Lagos since the extension of the lockdown. Would you say the lockdown is the reason for, for this? Let, let, me, let me go with you, Dixon. Though he has come to, to dispel most of those rumors and said there's nothing of sort actually going on in Lagos State. Uh, I, I, I kind of made this statement uh, while I was with him on STV some few days back. He still made the same statement while I was with him at uh, Super Screen. So he has been uh, publicizing this, uh, this fact that uh, uh, the state has the capacity and there is no threat. The, the threat is everywhere. We perceive this threat. We see the threat. And uh, if he tells us that uh, there is no uh, criminal activities or uh, some criminal elements uh, carrying out attacks on innocent Nigeria, I think I will stand to disagree with that fact. Uh, in the area where I'm going to agree with him is uh, having this uh, unorganized uh, uh, community uh, security, uh, you know, posing fear to the, uh, to the to the state, to the uh, environment. Uh, because like the area where I live, I observed that uh, just between yesterday when I was coming back home, uh, I saw a lot of guys with uh, machetes, uh, uh, some small arms and ammunitions, you know. And uh, the essence of security was defeated because people failed to understand that once fear is activated in security mechanism, the purpose of security is defeated. And that's why we talk about security is the totality of the freedom of fear or uh, uh, being uh, intimidated or coerced. So uh, the hoodlums, uh, sorry, the uh, people uh, that tend to protect their community, they are really unorganized and that is not a good one. And that was how uh, uh, terrorism spread up. Because at the end of this uh, COVID-19, or uh, at the end of this uh, uh, scenario, what next? Now, Adekoya, it was reported that landlords and youths have been depriving themselves of sleep at night just to form vigilante groups and complement the efforts of security agents in order to stop the attacks. Now, you, you heard the PPRO said that Lagos has the best security apparatus in Nigeria with the best trained personnel. How does this, how does this come up to you? Do you want to react to this quickly? Uh, well... Well, you, we need to compare oranges with oranges, uh, not oranges with apples. Um, so if you say Lagos has the best security in Nigeria, then what exactly is the level of security in Nigeria? If every now and then we hear that people die, people are kidnapped, and it's 100 today, it's 200 tomorrow, it's 50, uh, how, do we, how do we go? Uh, so, so fairly say that Lagos is fairly resourced. Uh, do they have all the personnel they need? Not at all. Do they have all the resources they require? Not at all. Do they have a political structure that supports the police? Yes. Um, are the populace understanding? Yes. Is the task enormous? Absolutely. 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 They don't have enough manpower 
you know, and I say this on good authority, to address the issues in security. But the police are doing the best they can. And to be fair to the police, yes, they did respond to the issue at Bagada. I saw for myself first time six police truck with personnel around the Shoki axis trying to calm things down. So you, the issue, it's what it is. It's neither here nor there. Yeah, but I guess the, the first PRO must say something to support his constituency. That, that would just be my, my position. Yeah. Now, videos made the rounds. We saw videos um, on social media. And here he was still trying to dispel the fact that for most of it, people are panicking based on rumors, hearsay. And that for most of the, for most of the things that they did talk about, nothing actually did happen. I agree. I, I tend to disagree with the uh, PPRO because we have uh, a lot of reports for from some uh, area of Lagos, uh, Oshidi, uh, Agege, and some area where there are criminal activities, you understand what I'm saying? And uh, for him to have come on board and say nothing happened, I think that's not true. Uh, the only uh, uh, fact I understand him is the fact of uh, the unorganized security architecture, you know, people trying to protect their communities, landlord and the house owners uh, uh, keeping vigil to ensure that their community are safe from these one million boys. Because I personally, I, I saw such uh, uh, security uh, facts from those uh, gatherings. But I'm not satisfied with uh, the way uh, the communities and streets uh, uh, come, uh, come together to, you know, uh, Radar security service to the community is scary, you know, it's very scary. I was with a friend yesterday and uh, the, my, the, my, my, my visitor was so scared, you know. I told him not to panic because, you know, you're approaching somebody on, on, on the street and you see him with knife, cutlass and uh, uh, various kind of uh, uh, arms, which yeah. is so scary. And uh, you cannot differentiate them from the one million boys. How do you differentiate these people? Because there is no... Uh, uh, a code of dressing. There is no way you can tell if these are one million boys or these are people that are protecting uh, the street or if these are street urchins. So what really is going on now is a, a, a security menace, security failure, because uh, the police need to come aboard now and they have to be reactive. Because while I was coming, I saw the police guys on checkpoints. That does not solve policing. Policing is not about mounting checkpoints. You need, they need to go before the laws. They need to go into the community, go into the streets. You know, tell these people that, hey, if you keep on carrying on your arms and ammunitions or you're uh, brandishing your, 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 uh, your cutlasses, it's going to result to fear. And when fear is activated in any given environment, security is defeated. Now, Adekio, let's take a look at our security architecture in the light of COVID-19. Prior to the emergence of COVID-19, we were dealing with insurgency, kidnappings and killings all around. Um, all around the nation. And now we, we're battling with COVID-19 where people are, of necessity have to be indoors by, by order. And we'll begin to see boys take to the streets. Let, let's take a holistic look at our security architecture in, in the light of COVID-19. Do you think our, our security personnel are overwhelmed at this point in time? Well, without any, without any doubt, we are faced with um, a hydra-headed problem. Uh, don't forget Boko Haram is still raging in the northeast. Do not also forget that uh, um, the incidents of kidnapping and banditry is still going on in the northwest. The head of pharma clashes has not gone away. It's not all every part of Nigeria that is on lockdown. Uh, so, I mean, some of the issues you are seeing really are issues of robberies, armed robberies. So let's first do a proper threat analysis and let's map the source of risk and threat in Lagos. Okay, some of the incidents you see are pure cases of armed robbery, opportunistic crime, vandalism. Okay, then there's the you, issue would of you, would you say this, of this, this is, within a certain area. Adekoya, did you think this is necessitated yes. by the lockdown, in any way necessitated by the lockdown? Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Now, what's the unemployment rate in Nigeria? About 30% and 3%. That number will jump to 40, 50% at the end of the day. Um, we don't even talk about the informal sector. The bulk of the people in the informal sector are daily wage earners. So people are not earning wages. Lagos State went into a two weeks lockdown before the federal government announced their own one week lockdown, which has now been extended. So pretty much you are looking at the commercial nerve center of Nigeria being locked down for effectively one month. You know, so the people will become restive because, you know, you must approach security with a carrot and stick approach. You want to achieve a lockdown, you must provide palliative. So, again, the issues met us ill-prepared. It met us in a state of quagmire already. It met us with a budget deficit of about 4.2 trillion, 4.1 trillion. So we were already in a very bad shape before COVID-19. When you add COVID-19 to the cocktail, 
you know, it becomes rather very, very dangerous. So we, we are almost at a cliff edge. And Nigerians have been very reasonable. States and countries like Zimbabwe and South Africa, they've had to call out the military. So uh, we are where we are. You wouldn't solve the problem immediately at this time. We will try to manage with what we have to police the army. But post-COVID-19, hard conversations must be held. The security architecture we are talking about is failing and will continue to fail as constituted. So the states must have state police. Everybody's talking about the president, the state governor. Who is mentioning the local government chairman? Where are the LCDA chairman at this time? They are also the chief security officers of the communities. So what are they doing to address this instead of security? Rather, you find local government chairman, with due respect to them, building houses in Ikoyi, moving to Leki, out of their constituency, for their own safety and security, therefore, they don't feel the pulse of the people. What we should find at this time are the local government chairman meeting with the CDA chairman, meeting with the CDC committee, as considered in the, in the local government, to address the issues of hunger, to address the issue of youth restiveness, to address the issue of uncertainty, and to provide a sense of leadership and direction. Nature, na nature abhors a vacuum. So where the local government are not providing leadership at the community level, you will find a state of hysteria as you find currently pervading the whole of the society. So clearly, some things must change, and we must hold ourselves to account to change the approach to security post-COVID-19. But now, I'm just using this platform and medium to call on the local government chairman to come to the table and show themselves as leaders. Uh, now, Dixon Oksai, in, in the light of what is happening, we're, we're faced with an Hydra-headed monster that is right now on, on every front and giving COVID-19. Would you, would you ask, do you think this lockdown should be extended after now? If the lockdown is extended, Nigeria might possibly explode, you understand? Because uh, as Oyeka rightly said, uh, we are not prepared for this lockdown. And uh, Nigeria is a state whereby we don't prepare for uh, things like this emergency response. And he also did agree that our yeah. security personnel are overwhelmed. And if they are, what, the, what is the our solution? Our security personnel has been overwhelmed right from time. We need a foundational uh, revamping of our security uh, agencies. And that is just the truth. Uh, because uh, when Boko Haram sprang up, the government were quick to send in the military to go and see if they could be able to deactivate these guys, which was not possible. And now we are having a, a, a COVID-19 uh, disaster issues, and uh, we have a lot of guys out there who, uh, who cannot feed, who cannot take good care of themselves. Because the truth is, when you go into the triangle of crime, one of the reasons why people steal is because of uh, opportunity. Or the second reason why they steal is because of desirability. Why the first reason why people uh, cr crush to steal is because of need or greed. Now, we have a lot of people that are hungry. They are, they are, they are, they are in need of uh, their daily bread. They are in need of their, of their daily waters. And uh, if they cannot find that, they will definitely resort to crime. But the only way this can be curtailed is when we have a, a, a magnificent policing system that can cut off the opportunity. Because the only way you can strike the criminal element is to cut off the opportunity. If the opportunity exists, they will continue to strive. And they are striving, they are succeeding. Because Lagos, the reason why uh, Elkanah, uh, the PRO of Lagos, is still uh, bragging with the effectiveness of the police, which I agree with him because uh, Sarabot Peace, uh, the founder of modern policing, says that the absence of crime best describe the effectiveness of the police. So I agree we have a, a, a small uh, crime rate within Lagos. The reason why that is is because we don't have much of a governed space. You know, the reason why crime flourishes in some states like in the north is because of your governed space. Because when these guys strike, they will fly to their governed space and take shelter, come back to the governed space, strike and go back to their governed space. So for me, uh, if the federal government, I, I would not advise the federal government to uh, extend, the ex extend the lockdown. What they should do is to put a mechanism in place so that uh, this uh, 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 pandemic will not spread. I can't uh, uh, endeavor that Nigerians put on their mask their face masks, social distances, maybe in a, co in a company where you have about 100 staff, 200 staff, they should mitigate it and reduce them to like 50, maybe, you know, sp spread them. And then uh, transportation system should also be, uh, uh, you know, educated. But let's just tell us But, but it how effectively control, control, can that, can control can that be in that we have places like Market Square. I mean, would you now regulate the amount of people that are going to the Market Square? Because all of these businesses need to be, to be open. I mean, how do you control people who go into the Market Square when it comes to you, that? When, when you go to uh, my tour for now, you will know that uh, the lockdown is just a play. It's a lot. It's a, it's a rehearsal. Uh, because when I went to my two, I said this is a disastrous situation, and uh, I don't think the government can control, uh, uh, regulate uh, the marketplaces. Right.
Now, before, before we go to the, move to the next segment, um, I think well, the, the Lagos PPRO also did mention the spread of panic among these Lagos communities. But what do you think? If this panic isn't on check, what could be the following effects? Because he referred to them as well, panic like I, and rumors. Like I said, nature abhors a vacuum. Okay, so uh, where there is no leadership provided at the community level, uh, people will cling on to any information that they can find. It's called the herd mentality. And particularly when you study how crowds behave, uh, when, the, when the crowd gets onto a mob mentality, which is what uh, my colleague in the studio is talking about, you have people with sticks and staves that are not committed to any standards, no international charter, jungle justice, and you know erroneous killings of people will become the order of the day. So, I mean, if people continue at this pace, we will create a situation for some people to explore to their own advantage. Already in some parts of Lagos, people are already paying 1000 for security to these people to protect them. Next thing you're going to find is an entrenched system where people are making money from post-COVID-19, they don't want to leave. So that is the issue. But quickly, I'd like to add that uh, I also support the claim that we should recover the economy. Already, crude oil is at uh, wherever it is right now, $22 per barrel. Uh, budget deficit of about $4.7 trillion. The budget is out of the window as we speak. If the government doesn't open the economy, it can't even begin to collect tax. I want to pay tax. Tax is due. VAT is due by the 21st. Nobody's working. Uh, so the state government themselves. So they, it's no longer sustainable. We have to take a lead from other countries that have opened up to find measures to ensure safety, security, and check the spread. But the economy has to be reopened so we don't have a bigger problem. Government, people should feel sorry for government at this time. So there is no revenue. We need to open up so that taxes can start flowing, so that the essential services can be guaranteed. Anything beyond April, we may have a bigger problem on our hands. Hello, you are with us on the second segment. But thank you for your contribution in this segment. And also to you, Dixon Osage, thank you very much for your contribution. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF Boss Mustafa, has some things to say. This is Off Max for discussion. We'll be right back. <laughs>